So as you know, the COR was present at the COP28 with an eight-member delegation, which was, which was part of the official delegation and which I had the honor to lead. All delegates engaged in high-level side events took the floor on behalf of local governments and municipal authorities in the plenary and in informal sessions, interacted with their national delegation and EU negotiators to put forward relevant points for negotiation and, of course, held bilateral meetings with civil society and with networks. In addition to the official delegation, further seven COR members attended the COP28 in other capacities, but worked closely with the European Committee of Regions delegation both on-site and outside, and of course online. So let us now watch a short video on the participation of the COR's delegation in the COP28 in Dubai. And we also have a second video highlighting a number of best practices that were connected to our members' climate action. We would like to share this with you as well. As carbon pollution heats the planet, scientists are warning that the Earth's climate may soon reach tipping points, after which changes cannot be reversed. We have to act now if we want to have any hope of stopping the climate crisis. Every action helps, no matter where it happens. Greening industrial production, mobility, agriculture and energy production, tackling air, soil and water pollution, reducing waste and consuming sustainably. To protect people and our planet, action starts at the local level. Dear colleagues, 
Cup. Yes. COP28 marked indeed a pivotal moment in our global pursuit for climate action. The historic agreement to transition away from fossil fuels marks the beginning of the end of fossil fuels and serves as a testament to our collective commitment to a sustainable future. For local and regional authorities, COP28 was a significant step in making our voices heard on the international stage, a long-lasting challenge for cities and regions worldwide. The achievements in COP28 mark a breakthrough in our ability to influence global climate talks. Prior to our arrival in Dubai, both the Council of the EU and the European Parliament acknowledge the pivotal role that subnational governments play in advancing climate action, responding to our strong call in this sense. This recognition became even more evident in the face of extreme weather events EU cities and regions experienced last year now confirmed as the warmest year in history. The successes we achieved together in Dubai were rooted in a year-round commitment prior to the COP. For this, I express my greatest gratitude to the delegation for their hard work and their dedication. Let me also express the gratitude of the whole delegation for the work accomplished by our Secretariat, which made it possible. <laughs> Thanks to our work demonstrated on the ground and our partnerships with subnational governments globally, in the local governments and municipal authorities constituency, we have made cities and regions take a central stage on the COP28 negotiations. In Dubai, the EU demonstrated that it is a reliable and engaged partner and that its European Green Deal is an irreversible pathway away from fossil fuels. But let me be clear. Targets on paper will not save the planet. We need adequate support. We need means to be made available for cities and regions where climate transitions will have to happen. The COR will continue translating global targets into local action and working hand in hand with regional and local authorities around the globe for the implementation of the targets taken in Dubai. From now on, we will work together to further amplify our voices to work towards the next COP, the COP29 in Azerbaijan. So I'm looking forward now to hearing the views of our guests, but also to hearing from all of you as members of the European Committee of Regions. So I would like to thank you again for joining us, Vice President Hosik, and I give you the floor for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, dear Chair, and uh, big thank you to the Committee of the Regions for the opportunity to be with you today. I haven't been to Dubai for the COP, uh, representing European Parliament, being part of the delegation, I didn't fail to notice actually very strong presence of the Committee of the Regions, but also regional representatives from around the world. And indeed, as uh, the Vice President said, the regions are playing even more crucial role and I think need to be heard much more, not only on the European level, but on the global level as well. Because at the end of the day, 
if the drought comes, if the flood hits, if uh, a hurricane like last night in Norway, at the end of January, beginning of February, hurricane in Norway hits, it's the mayors, it's the uh, regional leaders that need to lead the way to address the consequences. The COP28 was sadly actually the first time, and I mean sadly because it took 28 COPs before, to finally admit that we need to end the era of fossil fuels. This is not because the science wasn't clear. The science was clear for a long time. This is because the way decision-making works on a UN level. That actually there has to be de facto unanimity to agree on the final text. And the major oil producers and the major fossil fuel producers were until now fiercely resisting uh, the call for the end of the fossil fuels. But even they couldn't completely ignore what's happening and the shift away from the fossil fuels that's happening in the reaction to the climate crisis. Beyond this, it very important calls to, double, uh, to triple the renewable energy and double the energy efficiency globally by 2030 were adopted, which for me doesn't represent the challenge, it actually represents the opportunity. The science is clear. The scientists have been saying that even this deal isn't enough to keep us within 1.5. But what brings me optimism is that what we've seen in the recent years, the massive, massive increase in the usage and deployment of renewable energy, uh, the increase of uh, energy efficiency, is that we can indeed leave, that we can indeed move forward and make sure that we deliver on the 1.5. And why we need to do that is if not only for the sake of the climate, not for the sake of preventing massive uh, extreme weather events, limiting the crop failures and all the negative impacts that science uh, is uh, warning us from. Actually, it's an immense opportunity for development. We need to cut our especially European, reliance on fossil fuels because of our security. Because let's be honest, uh, we saw very well what happened when Mr. Putin started to turn off the gas, which we are reporting. That how much we are reliant on imports of fossil fuels from not really friendly regimes. What it made to your budgets, what it made to the people's budgets, when the costs of fossil fuels skyrocketed because of Putin's actions. The opportunity that you see in the jobs that can be created when uh, running the renovation wave, when using more renewables. And actually the money that can be saved that right now is being sent outside of the EU, outside of your regions for fossil fuels that can be kept within those regions. We need to also adapt. That's the brutal reality right now. We need a climate-resilient infrastructure. We need climate-resilient buildings. We need cities where people can live in the extreme hot summers. So let me get a bit to the, to the content. And one thing is the mitigation. Lowering the emissions is not only about the big utilities. It's a unique opportunity for the cities and regions to become energy producers rather than energy consumers. All the rooftops that represent the opportunity to put photovoltaics in. All the infrastructure that you can adapt and uh, work towards having it better prepared for mass transit transport, for having it better prepared for cycling, for actually fundamentally changing your cities to make them uh, more livable. I believe that the climate crisis is the biggest threat to humanity yet. But I also believe that this is the dealing with this crisis is the biggest opportunity to make our regions and lives of the people across the Europe better, to bring them prosperity and well-being. And it's going to be a pity if we don't use this opportunity. And this opportunity is in your hands, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now to Rafał Traskowski. Uh, dear colleagues, in Dubai we followed very difficult negotiations, and of course the outcome uh, was not uh, clear up until the end. 
But I would submit to you that COP28 conclusions ended up sending a, a strong signal as we wanted, uh, signaling consensus when it comes to moving away uh, from fossil fuels. And uh, what is most important for us, of course, a very serious inclusion and treatment of subnational governments in international climate talks. But we all know that targets uh, themselves will not solve issues. Pledges need to be translated into real action and need to be supported by adequate financial means. And we do not have much time. Climate neutrality by 2050 is only possible uh, when we put all of our hands on deck, of course, including us, subnational governments. At the COP28 Local Climate Action Summit, more than 70 nations, including 11 member states, endorsed the Coalition for High Ambition Multi-Level Partnership, the so-called CHAMP. By endorsing the CHAMP initiative, they committed to develop their national climate plans due in 2025 with their subnational governments and ensure that their investment plan targets take our contribution on board, which always was, of course, uh, our uh, point in negotiations. In the EU, we have the opportunity and the responsibility in 2024 to make the CHAMP a reality. Next Tuesday, we expect a communication on the climate target for 2040 uh, as uh, our second intermediate target before reaching climate neutrality uh, in 2050. EU cities and regions expect an ambitious target, and we expect that the next Commission will continue to strengthen direct collaboration with and support for cities and regions in order to meet this goal. But ultimately, the success of the Paris Agreement and in the EU of the European Green Deal will depend on how the green transition will benefit European citizens and businesses, and it has to be well explained, as everyone watching Brussels today and other cities in Europe knows. Most of us are already working in this direction, and we know that our ambition is not enough. The sustained delivery of ambitious climate and energy policies requires additional action in the coming years. This additional support needs to include areas such as financing, labor, and skills shortages, costs of material, and other problems that are hindering progress at the local level. Next year at COP29 in Baku, national governments will be called to establish a new climate finance goal. National governments together with the EU must provide the right financial and legislative enabling conditions, including targeted programs for cities and regions and increased resources in the next EU budget so that we can continue to reduce carbon emissions while fighting energy poverty. The example of the emissions on climate neutral cities provides the evidence that climate neutrality is not out of reach for us, but also the demonstration that financial and implementation tools are insufficient. Next month, the European Commission will propose important texts such as a communication on climate risks and another communication on water resilience. In the core, we believe that the climate and biodiversity crisis should be tackled in synergy, and that's why we are working on an opinion on towards a global green deal, harmonizing global frameworks for climate change, biodiversity and sustainable development, for which I'm proud to be the rapporteur together with Deputy Mayor of Budapest, Kata Tutu. And finally, as a chair of the core and the uh, commission and the uh, green deal going local working group, I can assure you that we will continue working hard to make multi-level ambition a permanent point in climate international talks and towards an ambitious outcome, not only of COP29 in Azerbaijan, but also a biodiversity protection at COP16. And let me join our president in thanking uh, our secretariat and all the people involved and, of course, our wonderful delegation for their incredible work at COP. It is our common success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now to Moreno Bonilla, please. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Queridos colegas y compañeros de delegación del Comité de las Regiones en la COP28, en primer lugar quiero reiterar el, y expresar el profundo agradecimiento al Comité Europeo de las Regiones y en especial, evidentemente, a, al Grupo del Partido Popular Europeo por permitirme formar parte de esta delegación que ha representado nuestra institución en la COP28 de Dubái el pasado mes de diciembre. Una edición que, sinceramente, creo que representa un gran paso para el conjunto de los gobiernos locales y regionales en cuanto a la importancia de, al reconocimiento de sus acciones en la lucha contra el cambio climático. Se ha oído, y podemos decirlo con nitidez, se ha oído nuestra voz en Naciones Unidas. Sin duda, se ha avanzado enormemente para que, de ahora en adelante, las aportaciones de los representantes de las regiones y ciudades vayan más allá de una aspiración y se puedan materializar en acciones que tienen que ser concretas. Los dos principales acuerdos de la COP28, o por así decirlo, los, los más aclamados, por, a, por decirlo de una manera, han sido, como saben ustedes, el compromiso de triplicar las renovables para el año 2030 y doblar la eficiencia energética. 
muy fácil de decir, pero ahora hay que llevarlo a la práctica, que es lo verdaderamente complejo. Es evidente que en esta ardua labor nosotros tenemos un papel que es un papel capital, un papel primordial, y sin nuestro trabajo y nuestro esfuerzo es absolutamente imposible aspirar a conseguir esos importantes hitos. Por eso debemos insistir en esa senda de cara a la COP29. Todos sabemos que se trata de un trabajo que hay que llevar a cabo durante todo el año, no solo en los días que se celebra la COP en noviembre del 24, igual que se hizo para llegar a la COP28 con los deberes hechos por parte del Comité de las Regiones. Gracias a ese trabajo se consiguió que el Consejo diese de forma expresa a la Comisión Europea un mandato que se mencionaba nuestro papel en esta lucha. Y también gracias a ese esfuerzo la presidencia del COP28 lanzó la coalición para las asociaciones multinivel de gran ambición, que fue respaldada por más de 70 países. Es por ello que ahora es el momento de redoblar esos esfuerzos para la COP29 y, él, y lo dice un convencido, por eso, por este convencimiento fui ponente en esta casa de la ley del clima y también porque soy presidente de una comunidad como es Andalucía que tiene un desafío por delante y que está sumida en un ciclo durísimo de sequía como consecuencia también del cambio climático. Por eso tenemos que liderar la necesidad de dar más peso específico a las regiones y a entidades locales en esa lucha en esa revolución contra el cambio climático. Y además porque, porque, como hemos dicho de manera reiterada y con claros argumentos, porque las regiones y los gobiernos locales son los más apegados al terreno, las que poseen mayor capilaridad y las que en muchas ocasiones están dando ejemplo a países enteros en la gestión de la crisis climática y de la biodiversidad que padecemos. Permítanme finalizar eh, agradeciendo de nuevo al Comité de las Regiones, en especial a los compañeros de la COP28 y agradecerles por el enorme trabajo que han hecho, por el buen ambiente que han creado y el enorme compañerismo que ha presidido todas y cada una de nuestras reuniones. Agradecer también al grupo del PP europeo y en especial a los excelentes profesionales del staff del Comité de las Regiones que nos apoyan y nos han apoyado en todo momento y que en Dubái tengo que decir que realizaron un trabajo espectacular. Creo que la conclusión final es que se ha avanzado en esa presencia, en ese protagonismo de ciudades y de regiones que es fundamental, completamente capital, en esta gran lucha, en esta gran batalla contra el cambio climático. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Ms. Alison Gilliland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Press Vice President. Uh, before I comment on what we can take from the outcomes of COP28, I want to focus on the significantly strong position of the Committee of the Regions and its delegation heading into COP28. And that was a result of actually implementing lessons learned at COP27. So ahead of COP28, we had strong COR climate action opinions, including our COP28 opinion, debated and adopted. Members, particularly the COP28 delegates, participated in a wide and varied range of fora, including high-level EU and UN dialogues throughout the year. Relationships and communications with the Commission and the Parliament were strengthened and deepened, resulting in, for the first time, a formal acknowledgement of the key role of cities and regions in the Council conclusions and in the European Parliament resolution on COP28, providing them with a multi-level mandate in negotiations. Our close working collaboration with the LGMA constituency, particularly with ECLE, allowed for a common position across global cities and regions to be coordinated. And this very much drew from our own core COP28 opinion. So this afforded us a strong, united voice across all global fora and in, action, in interactions with all parties at COP28. So everyone was getting the same message, that cities and regions are willing and capable to implement ambitious climate actions, but they must be included and they must be supported. So I want to commend the extensive behind-the-scenes work done by the Envoy Commission and Secretariat in realising these significant achievements. 
As already noted, we hit the ground at COP28 run, uh, running with yourself, First Vice President, and our Envoy Commission <coughs> President attending the first ever Local Climate Action Summit and also the launch of CHAMP, the Coalition for High Ambition Multi-Level Partnership. Normally, we would see heads, at, heads of state at these events, but it was the first time we had mayors and we had leaders of local and regional governments at them. As we've seen from the video, our delegation participated in a wide range of formal and informal events with a wide range of global actors, including the second ministerial on urbanisation and climate, worked with the EU Commissioner and Minister Teresa Rivera, continuously advocating for the realisation of ambitious climate actions through strong, inclusive, multi-level cooperation and collaboration, whether that be in the world of work and economic development, renewable energies with youth in the realm of fashion, art, culture, or in solidarity with our colleagues of island nations facing possible extinction. We crossed every sector and we crossed every continent with our message. And we all know the ingrained climate risks that we all face, and this is emphasized with the IPCC and also the global stock take. And there were moments when, honestly, we didn't know if the outcome text was going to go backwards or if it was going to go forwards. But I think we were all relieved when there were some bold commitments made. The transition away from fossil fuels to ensure net zero by 2050, in particular, the first time we actually mentioned fossil fuels in an outcome document. Tripling of renewables, doubling of energy efficiency, and we all know that we at local level are going to be involved in implementing that. The finalising of the loss and damage fund that also included access by subnational governments was a significant outcome. While a more formal commitment to mandate multi-level cooperation would have been more desirable, I acknowledge that our voice was recognised in the COP28 outcomes, and also by those parties through their signing up to the CHAMP initiative that commit signature governments to collaborate with local and regional governments in the revision of the nationally determined contributions for 2025. Going forward, and the lesson I would take forward, is that we can use this initiative in the lead up to COP29 to encourage greater multi-level collaboration and to build a strong evidence base for that multi-level action and collaboration in action, developing case studies to highlight how local and regional governments are absolutely key to realising our targets and a sustainable future that is not only climate just, but social and economically just as well. Finally, like my colleagues, I want to acknowledge everyone in the COR, the ANV Secretariat and the core comms team, as well as my own PES team, for the immense support they provided with us to ensure the success of our delegation. Thank you all. Preparations are already afoot for COP29. We have a review later on today with the delegation, and I have no doubt that we will build on our current achievements and achieve more in Baku in November. Thank you. Thank you. Our member, Vincent Chauvet, please. Merci, euh, Monsieur le Vice-président, chers collègues. Vendredi dernier, aux alentours de 22 heures, des agriculteurs en colère du Morvan sont venus déverser plusieurs centaines de tonnes de lisiers, de pneus, de paille sur les marches de la mairie d'Autun, devant la sous-préfecture, devant la permanence de la Chambre d'agriculture. Et interrogé par la presse, le porte-parole du collectif indiquait que eh bien, le maire Vincent Chauvet allait à la COP à Dubaï en avion et qu'ensuite c'était eux qu'on accusait de polluer. Chers collègues, cette, euh, ce fait qui est loin d'être une anecdote et qui est particulièrement euh, révélateur alors que les tracteurs sont devant notre hémicycle euh, de la situation actuelle nous renvoie à notre double rôle en tant que membre du Comité européen des régions. D'une part, celui d'être les porte-parole de nos territoires à Bruxelles et quand nous en avons l'occasion, et il est très heureux que le Comité européen des régions soit particulièrement leader parmi euh, eh bien, les associations d'élus locales et régionales au niveau mondial, 
de pouvoir porter donc au niveau européen, voire international, les problématiques de nos territoires. Mais également, à l'inverse, de pouvoir faire redescendre dans nos mairies, dans nos villes, dans nos campagnes, dans nos fermes, dans nos bureaux, le changement absolument nécessaire et les grands défis qui sont devant nous et qui nécessiteront de la part de la prochaine commission du Parlement européen des décisions fortes parce que, euh, eh bien, et on le voit, le Green Deal est déjà au centre de la campagne et c'est un enjeu démocratique important. Pour revenir en quelques points sur la COP, il y a eu évidemment un grand moment sur le nucléaire, avec la relance du nucléaire, c'est très important pour la France et pour notre territoire, et un certain nombre d'avancées, notamment le fait que dans le fonds pour la réparation des pertes et dommages, il puisse y avoir l'ouverture d'un financement direct des collectivités. Mais, et j'en conclurai par cela, l'enjeu maintenant est de territorialiser l'action climatique, de territorialiser les COP. La France a lancé le processus des COP régionales qui se décline dans chaque département, dans chaque communauté de communes, dans chaque commune, pour pouvoir établir un plan d'action en voyant, selon les territoires, les leviers qui sont les plus pertinents pour arriver à nos ambitions. Parce que nous sommes, et il faut le redire à nos compatriotes, à nos concitoyens, le bloc le plus ambitieux et le plus crédible sur les engagements climatiques et quand l'Europe prend des ambitions et quand nous représentons l'Union Européenne eh bien cela se décline rapidement au Parlement, au niveau national, au niveau local et nous devons nous-mêmes prendre notre part vraiment dans la déclinaison, c'est ce que je souhaite pour la prochaine COP, que nous allions encore plus loin dans l'ensemble de nos États membres dans l'ensemble de nos territoires sur la territorialisation des actions et des engagements qui sont pris au niveau international. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Our colleague Yura Droba. Uh, dear Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, Apostolos, uh, dear Vice President of the European Parliament, Martin, dear colleagues, today I'm speaking on behalf of the ECR Group, and I would like to share our conclusions from the intense two weeks of negotiations that took place in uh, COP28 in Dubai. As we know, the work goes beyond just the two weeks. Efforts are ongoing all year around, and this is why we need to continue to pursue our uh, emission reduction goals in the most realistic uh, way. We must defend technological neutrality with each country, free to choose its own strategy to achieve the common goal. By doing so, we would ensure Europe's competitiveness and maintain European technology leadership. The EU has flagged itself as a leader on the green front, and we need to follow through. This is why we very much welcome that nuclear energy was formally specified as one of the solutions to the climate change. The final COP28 decision text calls for global efforts to accelerate zero and low emission technologies, including the nuclear energy. Slovakia was one of the 20 countries that endorsed the declaration, recognizing the key role of nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear uh, forms 50% of our energy mix, and despite the terrorist Russia and uh, their actions uh, in the recent uh, two years, we still believe that this is uh, the way forward. The Bratislava region, which I represent, remains committed to the effective execution of the Paris Agreement, and we try to translate these commitments and pledges into action. In this regard, I'm delighted to share a little quick win with you. It, it was not that quick. It, it took us about four years to complete, but uh, we have an excellent example from my region. Uh, it's an eco center in the village of Tunovo. It's a project linking the environment, education, and tourism, and the doors will be open uh, this spring later on in a few months. The project is also an excellent example of cross-border cooperation with our dear partners from Austria, and Hungary, and its objective is to increase environmental awareness, create facilities for nature conservation organizations, and at the same time promote ecotourism and implement climate adaptation and mitigation measures. This eco center will be attended uh, by the youths and students uh, from Slovakia as well as from Austria and Hungary. In conclusion, 
I would like to emphasize the principles of partnership and multi-level governance in navigating challenges of climate change. I am happy that uh, for the first time also regional leaders were included uh, at the COP28 and not only the heads of state. Moreover, I'm convinced that to ensure the implementation of Paris Agreement goals on the ground, we need adequate financing for regions and socially just transition where there is no one left behind. Also, using common sense and applying such green solutions that really work for the benefit of environment, but also economies of our member states. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Droba. The floor to Andreas Grifroy, please. Thank you, Mr. First Vice President. Good morning, dear colleagues and dear members. Yes, we had very busy days in Dubai. The delegation put huge efforts and participated in a lot and lot meetings to bring our voices of the regions and the cities to the fore. And I'd like really also to thank the staff for the excellent preparation. We were successful in securing a strong reference to local and regional authorities. Someone is drilling behind. Just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we were successful in securing a strong reference to local and regional authorities in the EU mandate, working closely with the European Parliament and the Council. And we joined COP28 with expectations and hopes that parties would make further progress when it comes to formally acknowledging the essential role of subnational governments in achieving climate goals. In the end, what we get are just nice words and lots of promises. The final deal is positive and a great step forward on major issues. Transitioning away from the fossil fuels, boosting renewable energies, and energy efficiency, and also recognizing the role of new clean technologies and innovation, such as carbon capture, nuclear, which is also just like in France and Belgium very important, and so on. But the main question for us is, and us I mean, re, us the representing local and region, regional authorities in Dubai on this COP climate conference, did it recognize the pivotal role of regions and cities? Did it acknowledge our role on improving energy efficiency, renewable energy, and urban planning? And sorry to say, but the answer is no. The Coalition for High Ambition Multilevel Partnerships, the CHAMP, including several member states, committing to involve local and regional governments in the planning and implementation of climate policies is welcome. But will now all national governments really move from words to facts? Or will this be just window dressing, a mere distraction? Will it just end as something only on paper or in a lot of concrete local actions? And there have been laudable initiatives, launches over the last years. Yet, multilevel governance remains a pledge rather than a binding commitment for all parties. Our mission continues and our, our action must be bolder to give our regions our cities, the place they deserve in the global climate governance, because the solution will be largely found at the local and regional level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor now to Marek Schouten, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, and uh, your colleagues. I think my colleague uh, Nina would like to have been here because she was part of the delegation uh, of COP28, but she just gave birth to a baby girl. So, um, again, yes, thank you. Yeah. But I am happy to share with you what we have learned from COP28 and perhaps also which built on the lessons learned from previous COPs. And it is mentioned already quite a few times, because it, but because it is so important, I will repeat some things that my colleagues also already mentioned. Facing out the fossil fuels. And this final outcome document of COP28 
which outlines this transition to move away from fossil fuels is a really important and historic step. And we, as Committee of the Regions, also played a role in this outcome because it was also part of the uh, opinion of the Committee of the Regions on COP28. So our opinions on a variety of topics do actually matter. It signifies a clear commitment to the one and a half degree target, which is a cornerstone in the global fight against climate change. And following this decision and outcome, we as local and regional authorities can lead by example. For instance, by exceeding our goals, facing out fossil fuels well before 2050 to align with the broader global goal. What we all know is that across the globe, cities, towns and regions and citizens are taking bold steps to eliminate fossil fuels. And these efforts are directly addressing the primary human contributors to the climate crisis, human-induced air pollution and environmental damage. And local and regional governments are also in the privileged position to work with citizens, local business communities, and all kinds of communities from all walks of life to address the socio-economic changes that are part and parcel of climate action. It is imperative that all levels of governments accelerate the transition to a fossil-free energy mix. And at COP28, this working together of the Committee of the Regions and the LGMA really bore, bear, bore fruit. The agreement on a loss and damage fund with direct financing to the most affected local and regional communities is a key, key milestone and may become a lifeline to those communities. We also welcome the launch of the Coalition for High Ambition multi-level partnerships and everyone and every member state should become a member of it. As Europe, we have a responsibility to recognize the daily toll the climate crisis takes and to support the hardest hit regions. Yet, a huge financing gap remains and we need to step up efforts to provide more support to local, regional authorities and governments around the world. And let's continue to exchange knowledge, best practices, because we are still learning every day. And let's keep on demonstrating how we as local and regions uh, contribute to this change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, the floor now goes to the members, and uh, we will have one minute, strictly one minute interventions. The floor to Rastislav Tranka, please. Josko Klisovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, local leaders are agents of implementation. Uh, they take the driving seat in implementation phase. And implementation of European policies and targets means success. It means that policies and targets are not just empty words on the paper. And it's widely recognized that we are important in the implementation phase. At the same time, we do not have access to decision-making, to designing policies and targets. And that's why we have the COR. It is our voice. So I think that we should make COR more a politically influential body in decision-making process in the European Union than debate club where we spell out our frustrations. So let's really think how local voice through the COR can, be, uh, uh, can impact the implementation of, of uh, EU policies. And this is the only way how we will be recognized and acknowledged. Otherwise, we will be just, you know, asked to implement what somebody else is asking for us. This is not good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Andres Yadla, please. Member Garcia Gallardo. Las políticas climáticas son una completa estafa y, la, y cada día lo sabe más gente. El clima cambia, sí. Debemos proteger el medio natural, también, por supuesto. Pero las políticas climáticas no van sobre eso. Van de limitar nuestra soberanía energética, industrial y alimentaria con la falsa excusa del medio ambiente. Y si no me creen, pregunten ahí fuera. 
Europa no tiene un problema de emisiones de CO2. Quizás China lo tiene, pero Europa no. El problema lo tenemos con unas élites que están arruinando a nuestro campo y a los trabajadores europeos para favorecer a potencias económicas extranjeras. Bruselas ha traicionado a los europeos y estos ya no aguantan más. Por eso las calles de toda Europa se han llenado de agricultores y ganaderos que no se resignan a que las élites terminen con su forma de vida y su futuro. Ellos resisten en las calles y nosotros no vamos a dejarles solos. Adelante, agricultores y ganaderos de Europa. Abajo la Agenda 2030, arriba el sentido común. Thank you, Joseph Cobor, please. Dear colleagues, generally we have high expectations towards large international green affairs meetings like COP28, which are often followed by significant disappointments. The credibility of the venue is already questionable, as one participant mentioned having to set up a separate heating device in their hotel room in Dubai to counterbalance the uncontrollable air conditioning that produces too much cold. That is about energy efficiency in Dubai. The other aspect is that the main attraction of the meeting was the presentation by the Russian company Rosatom about small modular reactors, nuclear power plants. They are offering this to local governments and it is supported by the EU Horizon program. Nevertheless, we appreciate the representation of the practical standpoint of local governments by the core delegation. Local governments are demanding practical solutions for both resilience and adaptation, not just principles and ideas. Energy efficiency and building sustainable community mobility and energy independence based on renewable energies. These are Thank what you. local governments need and they need them as quickly as possible. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Eva Nieminen, please. Kiitos, puheenjohtaja. COP28 oli mittasuhteeltaan valtava ja lopulta onnistunut. Yllätyin lukiessani taustapapereita Hyvin positiivisesti yllätyin. Kyseessä on kuin paras opera tai näytelmä. Siinä on kaikki ja paljon hienommin kuin koskaan ennen. Ei riitä, että sanotaan puolentoista asteen tavoite ja ylhäältä tulevat ohjeet. Koko maailma pitää saada mukaan tähän näytelmään. Paikallistason toimijat ja siinä onnistuneesti alueiden komitea jo toimii. Yhteistyö globaalisti ruohonjuuritasolla. Koko ajan myös kiitokset vaikkapa pienistä edistyksen askeleista ymmärtäväisesti ohjaten. Ilmastonmuutoksen torjunnassa tai torjunnan suuresta operasta on tehtävä hieno ja kaikkia ihmisiä innostava yhteinen Thank you. Kiitos. Thank you. Stefan Ilie, please. <laughs> După conferința COP28, ne reamintim că lupta împotriva schimbărilor climatice nu este doar o sarcină pentru liderii mondiali, ci și o mare responsabilitate pentru liderii locali și regionali. Municipiul Tulcea profită de particularitățile sale geografice, de resursele naturale disponibile, Delta Dunării și Parcul Național Munții Măcinului, precum și de recenta înființare a organizației de management al destinației și promovează măsuri pentru a se adapta și a combate schimbările climatice, dezvoltarea turismului ecologic și protejarea biodiversității locale, utilizarea energiei regenerabile unde suntem la stadiul de a înființa primele comunități energetice, îmbunătățirea eficienței energetice în clădiri și gestionarea sustenabilă a deșeurilor cu finanțare țări atrase de peste 30 de milioane de euro, inițiative educaționale în comunitate. Prin urmare, lecția învățată este că nu există o soluție unică pentru schimbările climatice, iar acțiunile la nivel local și regional sunt complementare eforturilor globale. Thank you. Thank you, our colleague Schopesberger. Thank you, Herr Präsident, Herr Vizepräsident. Als Bürgermeister von Vöcklerbruck, einer Kleinstadt im wirtschaftlichen Herzen Österreichs möchte ich kurz unsere Lage schildern. Der Ausbau erneuerbarer Energie in unserer Stadt schreitet schnell voran. Während ich hier zu Ihnen spreche, werden 300 weitere Photovoltaikmodule installiert. Die saisonale Speicherung dieser Sonnenenergie ist der Schlüssel zur Dekarbonisierung. Bei uns in Oberösterreich befindet sich der weltweit erste geologische Wasserstoffspeicher. Die Vernetzung dieser Speichers mit Industrie- und Wärmenetzen würde tausende Haushalte dekarbonisieren.
Durch eben diese Vernetzung können höchste technische Wirkungsgrade erreicht werden. Vöcklerbruck ist der Platz, an dem erneuerbarer Wasserstoff seinen wirtschaftlichen Durchbruch feiern kann. Daher ersuche ich Sie, schaffen Sie die rechtlichen Grundlagen für die Umsetzung einer sektorübergreifenden Wasserstoffnutzung. Öffnen Sie Wärmenetze. Beseitigen Sie Hürden bei der Errichtung von Wind- und Photovoltaikanlagen. Städte und Gemeinden sind der größte Player im Kampf gegen den Thank Klimawandel. You. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you, Sari Rauschio, please. Dear President, uh, dear everyone, I will speak also in Finnish. Kiitoksia erinomaisesti onnistuneesta valtuuskunnan työskentelystä. On jälleen syytä olla ylpeä siitä, että miten mainiota porukkaa meillä täältä löytyy. Nyt on kuitenkin kaikista tärkeintä, että nuo teot viedään sinne arkeen. Ja haluaisinkin oikeastaan esittää vetoomuksen meille kaikille, että tämä keskustelu COP28 tuloksista ei jää vain tänne saliin, vaan sitä jatketaan jokaisessa kunnassa, kaupungissa, alueessa ja muutetaan teoiksi, erityisesti nuorten kanssa ja varsinkin, kun nyt vaalit on tulossa. Me tiedämme, että tämä muutos vaatii uhrauksia meiltä monilta. Tänään meillä on traktorit tuolla ulkopuolella ja sama tapahtuu joka paikassa. Silti me emme voi jättää toimeen tarttumatta. Se hinta, jos emme tee muutoksia, on vielä kalliimpi myös meille ja lapsillemme. Eli olla rohkeita ja viedä eteenpäin sitä hyvää työtä, mitä kopissa tehtiin. Kiitos vielä teille kaikille. Thank you very much, Antonio Maceo. Grazie, Presidente. Colleghi, condivido molto quello che all'inizio ha detto il collega Klisovic. Noi amministratori locali, di regioni, comuni, siamo fondamentali nell'attuazione delle politiche nella lotta al cambiamento climatico. Lo facciamo ogni giorno, lo fanno i sindaci, gli amministratori regionali, perché solo lì si può promuovere lo sviluppo urbano sostenibile e dare piani di azione che danno il senso del cambiamento che ci deve essere. Io vengo da una regione, la Toscana, che è stata colpita duramente qualche settimana fa dal cambiamento climatico. Ci sono stati otto morti, danni ingenti. Credo che noi dobbiamo cambiare il paradigma. Sempre più questo deve essere visto come un investimento e non come un costo. Spesso viene visto così. E allora rafforziamo i meccanismi di solidarietà e coesione per consentire alle regioni e ai comuni di aumentare gli investimenti per il cambiamento climatico e la resilienza impedire che i gruppi sociali più vulnerabili siano più colpiti. Facciamolo davvero. Grazie. Grazie mille. President Marcula. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me draw your attention and everyone's attention to the extremely well-written document, the five-page background note that we have. It gives a clear signals on the political context and the activities needed. However, At the end of that, when there are the priorities for the CR, one point is missing. We should definitely add there the upgrade the role of innovations and invest more, request more investments in research. Why is that? The challenges are so complex and only part of the necessary scientific and technological knowledge exists. And in addition to that, we need to understand that the decision-making in general, it's not sufficiently evidence-based, research-supportive, and not targeted enough on the creating favorable conditions for societal innovations and implementing those fast enough in real-life practice. I will do my own kind of document in Finnish using this five-page document, adding this crucial point, but pointing out what is really needed and what the different actors on multi-level governance and locally can do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our member, Florian Schutz. Klimaschutz findet bereits Gott sei Dank statt und er findet dort statt, wo die Regionen und besonders wo die Gemeinden sind. Äh, auch wir in Wiemann haben uns vorgenommen, bis 2040 klimaneutral zu sein und das machen wir nicht äh, aus gutem Willen alleine, sondern weil es unbedingt notwendig ist für das Wohlergehen unserer Bürgerinnen und Bürger. 2040 wird voraussichtlich jede vierte Sommertag in Wien ein Hitzetag sein. Uns blühen Tropennächte, Starkniederschläge, Wärmeinseln und wenn es uns nicht gelingt, hier eine Trendwende zu schaffen, wird Wien 
den Status als beste Stadt und lebenswerteste Stadt nicht einhalten können. Wir erwarten uns allerdings auch von der Europäischen Union dazu Impulse. Erstens eine soziale Komponente. Wir müssen sicherstellen, dass die Klimaschutzmaßnahmen nicht zu Kosten der Ärmsten gehen. Und zweitens einmal, wir brauchen Hilfestellungen für die Kommunen und, Region, Kommunen und Regionen im Bereich der Investitionen, die für die Klima Krise, Bewältigung der Klimakrise notwendig sind. Und dazu ist es notwendig, in die Golden Rule, sprich andere Investitionsregelungen zu finden. Wir vertrauen auf die Hilfe in diesem Fall der Europäischen Union. Dankeschön. Danke. The floor to Istvan Boka as the last intervention from the floor today. Köszönöm a szót, elnök úr. A COP28 eredményehez kapcsolódóan hangsúlyozni szeretném, hogy mennyire fontos a fiatalok klímával kapcsolatos tudatosságának a fejlesztése. Ebből a szempontból örömmel jelentem be, hogy a Balaton funkcionális régióban, amelynek egyben elnöke is vagyok, három évvel ezelőtt sikeresen indultunk egy programot a régió középiskolásai számára, amelynek célja a klíma és környezetvédelmi oktatás és inspiráció egy évente megrendezésre kerülő több fordulós feladatokkal felépített csapatverseny keretében. Tapasztalataink nagyon pozitívak, eddig már több mint 1200 diák vett részt közvetlenül a versenyben. Ez egy sikeres példa arra, hogy milyen egyszerű eszközökkel tudunk megerősíteni a következő generációkat, és ezáltal mekkora pozitív hatása lehet a klímával kapcsolatos oktatásnak a jövő vezetőire. Az önkormányok aktív részvétele kulcsfontosságú a klímával kapcsolatos oktatási kezdeményezések sikerességében. Arra buzítok mindenkit, hogy vegye figyelembe a helyi és regi, regionális önkormányzatok katalizátor szerepét. Köszönöm megtisztelő figyelmüket. Allow me to make an exception. I see Miss von Kalben who wants to intervene. Please go ahead, Miss von Kalben. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Das ist sehr freundlich. Ich möchte vielen von Ihnen zustimmen, aber äh, ganz besonders möchte ich mich noch mal beziehen äh, auf Herrn Markulla, der ja da hingewiesen hat auf die so wichtigen äh, Investitionen, die anstehen. Weil ja, wir sind als Region diejenigen, die alles umsetzen. Und in Schleswig-Holstein haben wir schon mehr erneuerbare Energien, als wir selber verbrauchen. Aber wir kriegen die ganzen Investitionen in die Infrastruktur, die vor uns stehen, nicht ohne die Hilfe der Nationalstaaten und vor allen Dingen auch der Europäischen Union hin. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. So, your colleagues, I will give the floor back to Vice President Hoschik for his reaction and final remarks, please. Herr Christo, Mr. First Vice President, and uh, thank you, uh, distinguished members of the Committee of the Regions, for lots of interesting input. And for me, it's encouraging to see all the work done on the ground, the opportunities that the regions are using to actually enhance your own self-reliance and independence, because fossil fuels are making us dependent on others, while energy efficiency and renewable give us independence. No autocrat can shut off the wind, no autocrat can shut down the sun. And if we need to use these opportunities, our regions will grow and prosper. It's also important, and I am happy to, that I heard uh, the words just transition, because indeed we need to make sure that the change is benefiting all, that it's not leaving anyone behind. And actually it was our dependence on the fossil fuels that is something that hurt the farmers most, because the high gas prices meant incredibly high fertilizer prices, because they are dependent on synthetic fertilizers. I believe that we need to grab this opportunity, and I'm really happy to see that many of you are ready to do that. The importance is now, will you get the support? Will you be actually allowed to use the opportunity? And one thing is that we need legislative framework on the European and national level that will not prohibit you from developing renewable energies, and we need the money. Interestingly enough, the money is there. Just my own Slovakia has 15 billion euros until 2030 from different EU sources as well as from uh, the sale of uh, the emission uh, quotas. This money shall not end up in the state budget. This money shall go to people, shall go to regions, shall go to you, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that you can gain the energy independence, that your buildings that you need to be taking care of 
are producers of energy rather than users of energy. And in this way, it's not about subsidies. It's about the investment that will pay back in a better future. So I wish you good luck in all the effort and, and look forward to further collaboration on making sure that the climate saving is an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice President, for being here with us. It has been a great honor and a privilege to have you here for this very important uh, topic for us and for the world as a whole. And I would like to thank all of you uh, members who participated in this very, very interesting debate.